let's face it, optics can fail. You can either get your optic shot out by a BB, have your batteries die, or just inclement weather makes your optic non-usable. And because of this, you should be prepared to use your backup iron sights and have a system that allows you to co-witness your sights. So in today's video, I want to talk to you guys about my personal setup that I use to make sure that I am still efficient and I am still able to look down the sights of my rifle even when my optics have failed. What's up guys, my name is Lane and welcome back to the BB Warrior. We're here to help you have a better time both on and off the airsofting field. And if you enjoy videos like this, if you enjoy the informative discussions that we have and our honest and independent reviews, would love it if you hit that subscribe button down below. And while you're at it, make sure to hit that bell icon next to it to stay updated when we post new videos every two days. So why don't we talk about what co-witnessing is because there's probably some of you who are unfamiliar. So the idea of co-witnessing is the ability, and this is my Crytac CRB here, the ability of being able to co-witness is to be able to look through your rear iron sight, through your optic, and see your dot, and your dot should be laying at the top tip of your front sight post. And most modern optics are designed to allow you to co-witness. So, you know, Aimpoint products, EOTEX, the only Aimpoint product that won't is going to be a T1 like I have here. You're going to have to pick up the right sized um, riser for that, or if you have a non-spec optic, you're going to need to pick up a riser for that so that you can properly co-witness. So the nice thing about having a setup that co-witnesses is, well, when your optic just isn't usable anymore. So this last weekend, I was at River City Airsoft for a winter game, and the temperatures were pretty cold. They were in the single digits, if not a little bit higher. And the issue with that is actually the electronics in my primary arms, micro red dot, died. Um, this is something that I will be bringing up in my review of this optic. But even on the highest brightness setting, my dot would, you know, turn on and off as it got a little bit warmer or colder throughout the day. So having the ability to co-witness my sights was important to me because I was still able to be effective and still put shots on target. So I knew that my front sight post was correct because I had it sighted up with my dot. So the issue that I was having is that my dot would randomly turn on throughout the day. So every once in a while I could see it and then most of the time I couldn't. So because the tip of my front sight post and my dot were in the same location, I knew that whether or not that dot was working, my shots would be going where I wanted them to. Now, again, this is going to depend on what range you have your airsoft gun sighted in at. If you're trying to shoot at someone who's 200 feet away and you have your dot sighted in for 100 or 150 feet away, obviously you're going to have to account for that drop. However, having a set of iron sights that will co-witness with your red dot is important for those situations when it happens. Considering that this was something that was happening to me all day, despite the fact whether I changed batteries or not, but as soon as I went inside it was fine, this was something that was real to me and something that I had to deal with. Now this is going to be a little bit harder if you get your optic shot out, however you should be using some sort of Waxan or a protector. I have my protector taken off at the moment for this video, but there are a few other things to consider when you're doing this. So you can't co-witness with a magnified optic. So if you have a magnified optic that does not have a non-electronic set of crosshairs, you're in for some trouble. So if you have like a short dot that doesn't have anything that's etched into the glass, you don't have a set of crosshairs at work when your optic's not on, you're going to have to go with something like a offset set of iron sights. So you're going to want to have a set of sights that are going to be on the side of your rail on, you know, whatever side that you prefer. Just keep in mind, if you are tilting your gun to use those, you still have hop-ups. So your BBs are going to be going to the left or to the right, respectively, depending on what side you're using. And I know a lot of people are going to say, well, why don't you just get like a little um, RMR style sight? But if your main optic is dying due to the cold or whatever conditions, that's probably going to be happening to your RMR at the same time. So it's great if your main piece of glass gets shot out. However, in those inclement weather situations, which are going to be happening because it is cold out, it is the winter here in the U.S. right now, you're probably going to want to have a dedicated set of iron sights. So you could be like me, and you could go with a fixed front sight. So I have a standard Crytac front sight on here because I obviously have a Crytac airsoft gun. And then I have a Knight's Armament style flip up rear. 
And the reason for that is if I don't need to co-witness, so my optic is running perfectly, it's a nice sunny day, I just like having this here so when I have to make those quick shots up, I have something that I can reference. And another reason why I like it is when I am going super slow around a corner when I'm shooting offhand. Sometimes I personally lose the dot when I'm doing that or if I choke up a little bit on my rifle or I have my stock um, brought in all the way. Sometimes when I am aiming to the left and trying not to hit my microphone here, sometimes I lose the dot. So I like having this front sight post up here that's always there because if my optic goes down, you know, I don't have to worry about flipping up both of my sights. I can, um, at the moment, I'm pretty decent at not having my rear sight up and just aiming down like this and being able to make shots. However, it is nice to flip up the rear sight and, you know, be able to know that my BBs are going to go in the exact place that I want them to. So guys, I want you to think about this in all of the equipment that you're using. It can fail, and it probably will when you're in an inclement situation. If you are in the freezing rain or the freezing cold or whatever situation, electronics like to die. You should also be thinking about this with your nylon gear as well. Stitching gives out, stuff can just rip or tear, and you're probably going to want a solution to adapt to that. So just think about that when you're packing or planning out your kit. You know, now that this has happened to me, I'm considering carrying a handgun again. I haven't carried a handgun for like the entirety of 2017 just because I wanted to lose the weight and I never really used it. But if my Crytac, which I've owned for two and a half years now, goes down, or if my HPA gun goes down, I still want to be effective throughout the day. So remember, guys, two is one, one is none, I guess you could say. Everything has the ability to break, especially electronics. And I've always been the type of person that has wholeheartedly put my trust into modern optics because they are a great option. They are better because there's less metal in front of your face and you can quickly acquire your target, especially in close quarter situations. However, everything can break, everything can fail, and it's probably going to happen to you at the most inopportune time imaginable. So I want to know from you guys. First off, do you run optics? And if you do, what style do you run? Do you prefer a red dot like myself or do you prefer something that's magnified? And secondly, I want to know, are you personally prepared for a situation like this? This is just something that I am really happy that I thought about. I didn't think it would happen because I really like this red dot. However, it did happen and I am really, really happy that I was able to adapt to that and put some shots on target because if there's one thing I hate, it's trying to aim without sights. But I want to know, again, guys, are you prepared for this type of thing? Make sure to let me know down in those comments below. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for staying until the end. I really, really appreciate it. Make sure to check us out on social media. Links are down in the description below, as well as where you can pick up a BB Warrior patch to help grow the future of the channel and help me make better, higher quality videos for you guys. This has been Lane from the BB Warrior discussing co-witness in Airsoft and why you should be prepared for your optics to break and adapt to it. And I will see you all next time.